Guys, Boxing Gossip here. Quick video, I say it's a quick video, it might be a bit of a long rambly one, to discuss some of the stuff going on in the heavyweight division at present. And unfortunately in this video we are going to be discussing a lot of nonsense, a lot of smoke and mirrors, and a lot of BS um, that's floating around in the game right now. First and foremost, I'll start with the headline news. Tyson Fury has pulled out of the Vladimir Klitschko rematch. This is the second time he's pulled out. Now, I don't know the reasons behind the pull out. I don't know if Tyson Fury is injured. I don't know if Tyson Fury is having mental health problems. I don't know why the guy has pulled out. I really do not know. Um, and because of that, I am not going to talk at length about the reasons behind a potential pull out. I'm not going to be critical of the reasons behind the pull out because I don't have that information. What I am going to say, however, is that this fight appeared to be um, heading in this direction for quite some time. Um, Tyson Fury pulling out of this fight, let's be honest, it's not a surprise. Were you surprised when you heard that news? Were you gobsmacked? Did it hit you for six? Or to be honest, did you see it coming? Did you see it coming when Tyson Fury didn't attend a press conference? Did you see it coming when it took weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks to get the fight announced? Did you see it coming when there was absolutely no real promotion for the fight? Did you see it coming when the photos emerged of Tyson Fury recently looking very bloated and overweight? I mean, let's be honest, this fight really didn't look like happening. And to me, it's no surprise whatsoever that the fight's been called off. Um, and... What annoys me here is not that the fight has been called off, but the timing of it. Why was it allowed to get to this stage? Why was there a press conference last week uh, that Tyson Fury didn't turn up to? Why have we got this close to the fight um, when, and having it called off now when, if we're honest, it looked like it was going to be called off for quite some time? Um, you know, for me, stuff like that is annoying. It's a black mark on the sport. More people will have gone out and bought tickets for the fight after the press conference. More people will have gone and booked hotels after the press conference. Uh, you know, these, these pullouts and this nonsense really, really isn't good. Um, now, I don't know what the situation with Team Fury is, but one thing I do know is that if they were in a position to pull out of the fight a week earlier, they really should have done that rather than going through with a press conference for the sake of it and rather than you know, giving the illusion to fans, to the opponent, Vladimir Klitschko, to everyone involved, that this fight was definitely going to go on. Uh, I mean, this is perhaps the most obvious pull-out in, you know, really isn't a surprising pull-out. So, it's, it's a bit of a black mark, and it's, it's not good for the sport. People are asking me, should Tyson Fury be stripped of the belts? I don't have a strong opinion one way or the other. I think if Tyson Fury were to release a statement saying he's got an injured arm and he's looking to be back in three months, then no, he probably shouldn't be stripped of the belt. Uh, how long did Vitaly Klitschko hold on to the WBC belt without defending it? Um, you know, how long did Ruslan Chagayev hold on to the WBA regular belt without defending it? I mean, there is precedent for these things, and he's actually only had the belts for, what is it, 10, 11 months, which is too long, don't get me wrong, but it's not like uh, crazy in the sport of heavyweight boxing at the minute. So, yeah, for me, it's... Um, it's disappointing, but not entirely unexpected news. But Team Fury, it's a bizarre, bizarre setup at present. And you guys know, historically, I've been a massive fan of Team Fury, a massive fan of Tyson, a massive fan of Huey. But I've always maintained that I wasn't biased towards them. I just like them. I like the way they fight. I like some of the way they held themselves outside of the ring. But recently, you know, with Tyson going up and down in weight so regularly, with these pullouts happening... Um, it's left a bit of a bad taste in the mouth. Now, I did a video uh, two days ago or so off the back of Peter Fury's interview with Bayloric TV where Peter Fury was talking about the Huey Fury versus Anthony Joshua fight being made. And Peter Fury um, presented in that interview like the fight was quite close to being a done deal and certainly gave the impression that that fight was very much potentially on the cards. Now, in the day or two afterwards, it's become fairly evident that actually that really isn't the case. Uh, Eddie Hearn did an interview with IFL TV where he suggested that the money that the Furies were after was ludicrous for that fight. Um, there's obviously still the UCAD hearing that Huey Fury is facing in November, which puts a fight like that potentially in jeopardy, dependent on what results come out of that hearing. Um, and Eddie Hearn's actually come out and said they're looking at guys like Joseph Parker, etc. So... Really, uh, that 
Peter Fury interview, I, I think was slightly deceptive. Uh, also, in hindsight, Peter Fury came out in that interview and said that we'd been offered the fight. And then it later, he later said in the interview that um, they hadn't discussed money. So I don't really necessarily see that as an offer uh, of sorts. You know, For me, an offer is when someone sends you a contract and someone says, we will pay you £1 million to take the fight. It's not, would you like the fight? We can discuss finance later. So for me, um, oh, I felt that that was slightly disingenuous. And looking back on those comments from Peter Fury and the suggestion that the Huey Fury-Anthony Joshua fight was was round the corner. With the benefit of hindsight, remembering the UCAD hearing uh, and looking at some of Eddie Hearn's recent comments, to me it's kind of clear that that fight was never just about to happen. It was never almost a done deal. And I think there was some smoke and mirrors there from Team Fury. And it's, uh, it's just a little bit of a bizarre situation with that camp as I see it at present. I don't really know if I'm, I'm coming or going with them. And unfortunately, and I'm going to say it as it is, uh, the Furies always had this reputation in the past of being very straight talking, uh, totally telling the truth, no BS, you know, that was how they liked to sell themselves. To be honest, now I see Peter Fury a bit of a promoter, and uh, I don't take what he says as gospel anymore. I don't completely buy into everything he says and believe it to be true. Uh, I actually believe that it was maybe a little bit disingenuous to talk up and to phrase that Huey Fury versus Anthony Joshua fight in the manner with which he did. Um, if you listen back to that interview with Baylorick, he also really sort of browses over it when Ingram asks about um, you know, Tyson Fury and what's going on with him. So I'm not 100% sure what's going on with Team Fury at present. We've had a lot of raised expectations, particularly when it comes to Huey Fury. Oh, Huey Fury will be fighting a tougher test than Anthony Joshua, and then it's Andy Ruiz. Huey will be fighting a top 10 fighter in the division, and then it's Dominic Gwynn, you know. Uh, Huey Fury versus Anthony Joshua is looking good. We've been offered the fight. Eddie Hearn's then saying that it's very, very, very unlikely. So, not really adding up, quite a lot of BS coming out, and really it's kind of, um, you know, I'm a huge Tyson Fury fan. I've followed him from his, his very early days. For me, um, it's actually making me less interested in Team Fury at the minute. I'm more interested in seeing um, fighters who are more active. And some of it may not be Tyson Fury's fault, some of it may not be Huey Fury's fault, but I do think they could have handled the press and the, the public relations slightly better than they have done. Um, continuing the theme of BS, obviously we've now got Huey Fury without a fight. Um, we've now got Tyson Fury without a fight. But at the same time, we've now got Anthony Joshua and Vladimir Klitschko without a fight. Now, Dan Raphael and Eddie Hearn have had a Twitter exchange today where Eddie Hearn has ludicrously, in my estimation, suggested that he has reached out to Team Klitschko to make the AJ versus Klitschko fight. Um, I would make it 100 to 1 that that fight happens. There is no way in earth Eddie Hearn is going to risk Anthony Joshua against Vladimir Klitschko. Vladimir Klitschko may have lost to Tyson Fury, but taking Tyson Fury aside, Vladimir Klitschko for me is definitely the number two heavyweight in the division. He's a league above anyone Anthony Joshua has fought before. Um, Vladimir Klitschko carries lethal uh, leading power in the context of today's heavyweight division. And that experience he has, that pedigree, uh, that power, I think at this stage he could well still prove to have far too much for Anthony Joshua. Uh, I don't think there's any chance that Eddie Hearn would take the risk of a guy like Vladimir Klitschko. And I think if he was going to make a fight with that great a magnitude of risk, it's certainly going to be a summer fight at Wembley where they can you know, generate huge, huge build-up with months of promotion leading up to it and then generate um, ticket sales the like of which we haven't seen before. They're not just going to stick the fight on it, you know, with sort of eight weeks notice in Manchester Arena, uh, you know, I just don't see that as realistic. So for me, that's absolutely nonsense for Eddie Hearn. Uh, it looks like potentially we'll be seeing a Joseph Parker, Joshua fight. Still wouldn't surprise me if, uh, um, you know, we see Joshua in with a slightly more disappointing opponent, the likes of an Eric Molina, a Johan de Paar, someone with slightly less credibility at the top of the sport. But you know, there we go. Unfortunately, in heavyweight boxing, especially with the UK fighters, we've got to question everything at present. 
Uh, we had to question whether Fury Klitschko rematch was ever going to happen. We had to question whether Huey Fury versus Ruiz was ever going to happen. We certainly had to question whether Huey Fury versus Anthony Joshua was ever going to happen. I'm afraid right now I'm certainly not buying the hype about Vladimir Klitschko versus Anthony Joshua. As you can tell, a slightly annoyed heavyweight boxing fan sitting here today in front of my wallpaper. Um, so much nonsense flying around, so much BS. What we really want to see is a decent fight. Let me know your thoughts, people. Leave your comments in the section below. If you've enjoyed this video, do take the time to hit the thumbs up button. I'd certainly appreciate it. Uh, if you're new to the channel or you haven't done so before, please hit subscribe. Many thanks for watching, guys.